brought to you by Hula Frog, local things for kids to do. HulaFrog.com. Hello, and thanks for watching Illusionist Michael Howell Live. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Hula Frog. I'd also like to thank our guest sponsor, Macaroni Kid. Another special thanks to Williams Magic Shop, Mildred and Dildred, and Arizona Family, guys. Uh, if you guys want to find out what supplies you're going to need, you can go to illusionistmichaelhowell.com and click on the Illusionist Michael Howell Live link. And at the top of the page, um, it'll tell you what you're going to need for each episode. So we're going to go a little bit out of order. We're going to do our uh, science experiment right now. Um, so what you're going to need is you're going to need two cups of water and you're going to need your food coloring and then you're going to need a clear empty cup. It doesn't have anything in it. So you're going to put that right there. Okay. And then, um, was it how many, how many, which one's more? Is it yellow or blue? Yellow. Yellow. So we're going to do 10 drops of yellow in the water over here. So count with me. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's the yellow. Okay. And then we're going to do 10 drops or five drops of blue. So one, two, three, four, five came out faster than the yellow. Okay, and then make sure you have your paper towel because you're going to have to stir each one. So stirring the blue. Ooh, sounds good. Alright. Make sure you wipe off your spoon. Okay. So then you're going to take, like, what'd you say? What'd you do? Like a half like a, one of these, mm -hmm. and then fold it like three times, and then break it in half, like so. And then you're gonna put part of it into the yellow, and part of it into the clear glass. Put them closer together. And then put part of it into the blue, and part of it into the clear glass. And this is gonna kind of this experiment's going to happen throughout the episode, so you guys can kind of watch as we are um, doing other things in the episode, you can watch this happen. So, and the reason I, that's why I did this right now instead of later on in the episode. Oh, so, you know, we all have, you know, our moms uh, always have those purses, and they're like Mary Poppins purses. And it's kind of funny, because my mom's like, son, I'd like you to do a magic trick using something that belongs to me. Now, we all think our mom is like Mary Poppins and she can pull anything out of her purse. You know, like one of the things I always ask my mom for is a straw. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up her bag. And guys, you would not believe the size straw she has in her purse. It's huge. Look at that thing. It's like giant. This is like, yeah, and this is, guys, this is how my mom said we should keep social distancing six feet apart. Shh, just pull out the straw. Make sure you're six feet apart. All right, but seriously, mom's purses are like uh, Mary Poppins uh, purse bags, basically. It's everything, anything you need as a child, um, you get from your mom. Uh, she always has it in her purse. Now, as far as upcoming events, uh, it's, it's really hard with this pandemic uh, because we can't perform live and we have to be socially distant, but we do social distancing magic shows, uh, whether there's like a birthday party a, uh, or a wedding, or if you guys just wanna be entertained over the summer. Um, and so basically we pull up, we wear a mask, or in my case, I wear a shield because I do have bad asthma. So uh, I'll probably wear a shield. Um, I mean, I'll wear a mask if that's what you guys want. I mean, but I'll just have to, uh, do a breathing treatment afterwards because my asthma is really bad, but I'll come to your place and we'll do social dis distancing magic. So uh, you can go to illusionistmichaelhowell.com and uh, check it out and kind of find out more information about that. Um, also, I have another web show called Magic Squad uh, with Benny James. He's a comedian. He's a magician. Uh, 
He's awesome and a lot of fun. Now that's PG with parental guidance. So make sure you guys, uh, you know, ask your parents before watching it. But that's also on my website or on this YouTube channel, uh, illusionistmichaelhowell.com. And you can click uh, Magic Squad is the name of that episode. And guys, right now the science experiment is happening and you can see the yellow, uh, it's going, it's getting sucked into the paper towel and dripping into this glass and the blue is getting sucked up into this paper towel and it's dripping into this glass. And what it's doing is it's making uh, green water. So when you mix yellow and you mix blue, you get green. The color of boogies. Ew, that's gross. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so guys, um, try this at home. This is really cool. You can see it um, very slowly working, um, but it sucks up the colors and mixes them. And you can mix different colors and you can learn your colors this way, guys. Uh, so next up, uh, I'm excited. We have a comedian. Uh, he's a lot funnier than me, I promise. Uh, so, uh, please welcome Monte Benjamin, and he's sponsored by Macaroni Kids. Let's go into the screen here. Hey guys, uh, I am so excited. We have a very special guest today. Comedian Monte Benjamin. Hello. Bum, bum, bum. And don't worry, you don't have to go through all the terrible jokes that uh, I tell because he tells funny jokes, guys. So, Monte, what got you into uh, comedy? Um, good question. My mom. <laughs> My <laughs> mom got me into comedy. Uh, it started when I was young. Uh, she used to do like funny stuff like around the house, and I guess it caught on and I uh, I ran with it. I was always like the class clown. I was always the one who, you know, wanted to be like the funny guy in the group. Uh -huh. So uh, I just said, let me just take this gift that I have and just see if I can like do it professionally. And, cool, yeah. man. Well, you wanted to be funny. I just naturally ended up being funny when I was trying to be serious. <laughs> I'll never forget my first magic show. I was trying to be the cool swab magician and like the first five seconds of my show people were laughing so hard and I don't even know what I said that was that funny. But that works too. But it works. That, that's, that, that works too. And that's honestly now I, I, I roll with it and it's 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 great. There you go. So uh, what was your like first big comedy performance? Like what was your big breakthrough when you started getting into comedy? I, uh, I don't think it was a uh, it was like big big but to me it was it was that moment. I was I was working at a um, computer company where we did you know computer uh, consulting and we went and we installed them and it was a small 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 business and uh, I used to make jokes around the office and uh, one of the like I guess supervisors uh, saw me and was like man this guy's you know clown all the time at, at work. Maybe you should go and uh, do a uh, open mic, and I was like, "No, nah, I don't, I don't know about that." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So, got everyone in the office. He's like, "Yeah, man, we'll come out, we'll come support." And uh, it was like my uh, first time. So, they used to have this open mic at the Miami Improv uh, on, I think it was Wednesday. On Wednesday, so I was like, "All right, I'll go down." <laughs> and so, everybody from the office as well I guess wow. they'll see me like like fall and have a disaster because they were waiting on that they were ready to pounce and um because I used to do jokes around the office and yeah. stuff like that so I signed up for the open mic and uh so they were there to cheer me on and I went up and I began to de deliver my my set and uh it went great wow. it went really good and from that point it was like um an addiction <laughs> and I, I wanted like more i wanted more of the applause more of the just the center of attention on stage and uh that was like my biggest moment that like propelled me into like doing wow it's so, professional guys that's when you know you're a real comedian when everyone goes to ex expect to see you fail and then you could actually make them laugh i know i <laughs> i did a magic show and so like i said i don't try to be funny but when i try to be funny and I do, I did a stand-up routine. It was not funny. 
but my sibling thought it was hilarious because I failed. <laughs> <laughs> so at least somebody got enjoyment. I'm not sure about the like, right. regular audience, but like at least they got yeah, that at enjoyment. Least somebody, right, they gave right. us a big laugh later on. Right. Um, so with this whole pandemic and everything going on, COVID, we got these cool masks. This, he's got a real cool mask. Darth Vader like, forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've actually seen people wearing full-on Darth Vader mask in the store. Like I've seen that also. Crazy. I've seen that also. Yeah. Um, like, what are you doing? Like, how are you keeping the comedy alive here in Tucson? Oh wow, well, that when uh, this is it's the funny part because I was. While I was doing comedy, I wasn't really into it, like, um, full-time comedy. Uh, I still had, like, a side job on the side, and I did, like, comedy, like, uh, every, like, week or every other week or, you know, a couple of weekends out of the month. Uh, but uh, before the pandemic started, um, like, two weeks before the pandemic started, I quit my job. And oh. I was like... I'm going into this thing full time. <laughs> had no idea. It was just blindsided. Like I quit my job. I had um, events lined up for um, March and April. I mean, I'm sorry. It was uh, I think it uh, was March April. Is when it hit. Yeah. Yeah, March yeah. and April. I had it. Yeah. The whole month booked out. I was like, okay, here it goes. And then next thing you know, the whole country got shut down. So um, that means no more. You know coming together no more bars no more uh comedy clubs no more yeah. you know so basically all of comedy just in the country just got put on hold and yeah. i haven't like really did a like good stand-up routine in, i guess since february wow and uh, so it's been a while so wow it's hard too like trying yeah. to find that niche and try to do something with the talent that you have yeah. So uh, since I can't go out, I'm trying to at least try to bring the comedy to the people. So I've started a podcast. Podcast, and, okay. Um, yeah, so if people want to hear me, they can hear me through through the podcast and because everything else is like... You have a, I, you know, you do have a face for a podcast, so... <laughs> <laughs> He's here all week. I'll be here every yeah, episode, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you set me up for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Through the law, but you caught it. <laughs> so, well, right now, no entertainment's happening. Right, I mean, as right. far as like magic, and so one of the things I've had to do is I do social distancing magic shows where I literally drive to people's houses, perform out of the back of my vehicle, <laughs> wearing a mask, and then like leave. I mean, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, that is. Weird. I've done a couple it's... gigs and it's gone well. Um, but you know, online yeah. is is good. Um, for real, for real. For real, for real. <laughs> not, that's for not a joke. This is real. Like, uh, honey, uh, <laughs> who's this guy in the tuxedo out <laughs> front, uh, flipping rings and having <laughs> juggling? Who is? No, that's was, cool. Does that bird fly and buy from outside, or did he make the bird appear? Yeah, no. That's, that's cool. <laughs> it's magic. Yeah, at least you're like doing something. You're staying trying. Active. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I've actually seen a uh, buddy of mine's doing. I don't know how this is going to work, but he's doing an online magic show. And honestly, I like doing live stuff, which is I why I'm so happy to understand. do Magic Squad and film in front of a live audience. But he's also doing a comedy thing and for a comedian. Doing comedy online. I mean, it's live, but like you're not getting the response. It is, exactly. Like, how, it, how does somebody it, do that, or is that something you would ever it consider? Is, it is the, the, the worst. <laughs> for yeah. me. No, I don't want to yeah. speak for, you know, all comedians, because there are some who... Are doing it, you know, virtually. But yeah. for me, it is the worst uh, experience because yeah. I am a, um, I'm more of a people, people person. So I like the interaction, and I feel the the, I guess the the applause, the laughter, and it gives me that extra, you know, oomph to right. continue. And you don't know when you're <laughs> virtual on the screen. You don't yeah. know if you're doing good or bad. <laughs> so it, it just it's it's hard and you're just up there talking just it's all about timing and you don't know what your yeah, timing is because you, you can't get a reaction from the audience exactly i know when i i do the magic for the episodes and i'm sitting there and i'm behind the table and it's just <laughs> Derek and i in the apartment and i'm all like yeah you did good job mike like i'm trying to get myself praise because i can't you get the reaction from i understand uh, i mean it's so weird but at least you know we're able to do this and like right put out the positive energy and kind of keep the arts going uh for yeah, now well, yeah it's you know at on, least on I have <laughs> you here 
Jericho, hi Jericho, <laughs> she's running the camera. But yeah, even that little bit yeah. is enough. That's what we can do. That's enough need. And I, I just interviewed a guest that's going to be on later, later, uh, Susan uh, from Invisible Theater. And mm -hmm. they're the only place or theater right now that are going live. But they installed this fancy like air conditioning system and like they have all these seats taped off and you have to wear a face mask. But that's like the only place I think around wow. other than Gaslight where you can drive up, see a show that's, you know, live wow. entertainment right now. So, you know, this is something we can do, you know, to, to keep the entertainment right. business going, comedy. Right. Do you, uh, so I know you guys are tired of my jokes. So I have a question for you. Do you have a cheesy joke to tell the beautiful children easy oh i don't oh <laughs> wow i uh if you told me a pretty good one if you want okay, you can. i'll just I'll okay just say that one okay this is for you you guys you can you can have all of it i don't want it back <laughs> all right let's do it what do you call a deer with no eyes what do you call a deer with no eyes i have no idea Oh. Oh. oh! And guys, now you know where I learned all my good jokes from. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you guys want to find out more information about Monte, uh, where can they find out information? You know, uh, all the social uh, media platforms, Monte Benjamin, or uh, at Monte Benjamin, it's all of them are Monte Benjamin. You can find me. Do you, have like a, do you have a website or is it all? Website also? is Monte Benjamin. Facebook, Monte Benjamin. Is it at dot com, dot org, dot Oh, Monte Benjamin dot com. Dot com. Okay, okay, there's a lot of. There's I know, a lot of, I know. <laughs> you don't have to put the WWW in either. It, it does it automatically. I'm so old fashioned because I, whenever <laughs> I make my flowers, I'm like WWW no, dot illusionist. I have the world's longest email, by the way, and website illusionistmichaelhowell dot com. It's super long, but you guys don't forget it. Your, your name. It is my name. Yeah, that's it's true. What you do? <laughs> uh, but Monte, thanks so much for coming on. Thank Social you distancing. For... <laughs> Fancy. You guys take care. Thank you so much, Monte Benjamin, for coming on the show. Oh man, he is hilarious. He's got kids of his own. He always does family fun. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, guys. Don't try this at home. This is extremely dangerous. As you can tell, I really. Like playing with fire. On the count of three, we're gonna say the magic words. Hula frog, ready? One, two, three. Hula frog. And ladies and gents, in this pan we have two beautiful doves. Woohoo! All right, Jerrica's gonna take one. Say goodbye, doves, and she's gonna take the other. Uh, so yeah, I love working with animals, and I try to do magic uh, each episode, or at least show an animal. Um, because I want to show you guys that I rescue all types of animals from horses, goats, chickens, ducks, pigs, peacocks, exotic animals. You can go to Rose, uh, illusionistmichaelhowell.com, um, click Illusionist Michael Howell Live. On there is a Rose Man Ranch Animal Rescue link, uh, and you can donate to the GoFundMe, or you can buy a t-shirt for $45, or you can get yourself a picture to scare the bugs away of me with an animal that will be autographed and mailed to you guys for just 10 bucks. Um, and if you just wanna donate, you can go to Tropical Kingdom. There's gonna be a jar on the counter and uh, put your donation right into that jar at Tropical Kingdom Pet Store. They are supporting us, so thank you, Tropical Kingdom. Now, it's that time where we get to tell you the corniest, dumbest jokes. Sorry, Monte, I hope this isn't an insult. <laughs> All right. Jerrica, what do you call a boomerang that won't come back? What do you call a boomerang that won't come back? A stick. <laughs> uh, that's bad. These get worse, guys. This is probably the worst line of jokes that I've had all season for Illusions My God All Life. Okay, Jerrica, what does a cloud... Okay. What does a cloud... Ugh. What does a cloud wear under his raincoat? What does a cloud wear under his raincoat? Thunderwear. Oh. Ah, that's so stupid. And it gets worse. I don't even get this next joke. I'm going to have to have my mom explain this one to me. What time is it when the clock strikes 13? What time is it when the clock strikes 13? Time to get a new clock. Yeah, that, <laughs> that I had that memorized. I don't even get We're going to do a knock-knock joke, guys. You ready for this one? Knock-knock. Mm. Who's that? Annie. Annie who? Anything 
you can do, I could do better. <laughs> it's like anything you can do, I can do better. If it's I from that. No, you can't. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hopefully the jokes will be better next week. We have a very special guest, uh, modern mystifier Nima. Uh, from Las Vegas, guys. He's going to come on and mystify us doing magic and talk about his career. You won't want to miss this, guys. Take care, and I'll see you guys next week.